metal voice in the dungeon, the rock and roll dungeon, with three of the four members of Sword, Mike Mike. Plant, Rick Hughes, and Dan Hughes. So we're very excited. We're doing the show today to promote the third album after all these years, number three. Yes, sir. And okay, so so what do you guys have been doing since you've unleashed hell back in '86? <laughs> Where do we start? Well, a lot of different things. First of all, we have ten children amongst the four of us, <laughs> so that kept us pretty busy, right? We did well, our job <laughs> raising we, them. Yeah. Do you want to show the album? Of course. It'll be a good time. Look at this beautiful album cover. Sword three. Yeah, the three of swords. Hot off the press. It's still it's still warm in my hands. Yes. Uh, okay. So what is this? What is this talk about new old stock? New old stock. Yeah. Well, uh, looking for material for this album, we went back in the uh, the songs we uh, we made. Uh, back then and uh, there was a lot of because the way we used to do things in those days we, we'd uh, like write and record a demo of a certain number of songs then we'd go see the record company then they'd have a listen and they they kind of have a say at uh, no not this one no th yes this one so all the no's we 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 just threw out you know and we just Focused on, on the, the yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> but after listening back to the nose, uh, it was some good stuff there. So we just took what was the best. It's it, it just taking it as a, a skeleton, just taking the best, the, bare bones. the best remains. <laughs> yeah, the best <laughs> out of things and uh, rewriting new music around it and uh, new lyrics, new lyrics and uh, working on. Uh, uh, melodies and uh, okay. what I guess that's what you could mean by new old stock. Uh, so the bare bones were there in the 80s it would have been written at and then now you've just brought it up to Mike. right 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 because uh, did this part did this riff is good uh, this riff sucks uh, we'll change that and uh, but it, it was h hard work though uh, yeah so uh, again it's coming out on massacre records it's coming out on what the 18th of November I believe so uh, why now? Why after all these years? Well, when we came back, so to speak, when we did a few shows in uh, 2011, 2012, something like that, and then we opened a, a Facebook page, Sword Facebook page, and uh, a lot of people subscribed to it, you know, and uh, a lot of the comments were, uh, we'd like to hear some new material. For sure, yeah. So that's w that's when it was decided that we'd. Uh, for it, well, it was first decided that we would put out an EP with just three songs, and that turned into a full album. Many factor. Why came, not now? Yeah. yeah. Why not now? And exactly. many factor came into play. You know, just for the uh, when we went to Germany to do the shows. You know, yeah. the, the enthusiasm of the fans was such that that we felt it. We if if, if there's so much, you know. A, a, nice enthusiasm about the band when we are live it's probably the same for 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 new material Metal from Quebec. here we go all right here we are at the house the house of rock house of rock so it's in an undisclosed rock. location how do you know you're at the house of rock there's a banner a led zeppelin banner as you get in that's right. that's how you know and right after that you get the rolling but, but wait a second wait a second when we unleash the quebec flag here this is backstage this is this is metal this come, is like th come this, backstage guys <laughs> this is this is metal as, as this is where we go and, you go, and, then you go. and look at this this is like pure metal here look at that look at that wow exactly. so this is what it's really like that's how Th th this is where Hammer time. I forge my trophies. <laughs> Look, <laughs> because you saw I like old cars. I know. I, so I, I saw you making. I saw you making an Oscar before for yourself. Right. An Oscar. But let's okay. go visit. All right, let's go visit. Let's take a look around. All right. Okay. So tell me about the memories. You know, backstage. So how long you been here? First of all, how long? This is, is the house of our manager, mm -hmm. Rich Rich yeah. Chartrain. Yeah, yeah. Well known, uh, well known figure and uh, figure in Montreal's yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, rock and roll thing. Janice. Yeah. Jimmy. These are uh, your influences, right? These are. Under this is Colonel Tom Parker here. Yeah. No. This, this or the Marlboro Man, I'm not sure. I don't know, he's just, he's a presence. 
Let's let's okay. just say that he's a presence. Okay. Have a good day, sir. Okay, so here we go. Okay. We're walking around and this Alan, Alan. This is where we, we, we do the sword thing, right okay. here. And, you know, we have to revisit your past a bit before we talk about three, but Metalized. Uh, Dave Ellison says hi by the way, we interviewed him earlier this week, and he remembers that album. Rick spoke about Metallica listening to you guys at Soundcheck, and they wanted to hear you guys, because they were listening to the album. That album for me has become like a cult classic. Everybody knows it exists, everybody loves that album, but it wasn't one of the top chart toppers at the time, but it's got this cult-like status. Dave Ellison was saying because the, the sound was big. I asked him why he has special memories of Metal Eyes. And he says because the sound was big, the vocals were big. Why do you think that album still stands out in everybody's mind all these decades, decades later? I don't know, maybe it reminds them of their youth. Well, I, I, I couldn't tell you because personally, I'm speaking for myself now, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> I don't think it sounds very, very good, this album. Oh, you know? really? But I know that's not the case for people say, fucking sounds great. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, 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 think the, I think the sound on this one, the new one, is very good. So, yeah, I mean, let's talk about that. I mean, you're like a quadruple threat, right? Great guitarist, songwriter, uh, video producer, and, and record producer? Wow. <laughs> anything else? Did I miss uh, anything? Chauffeur? No, a father. <laughs> father. Uh, yeah. Riff maker. Uh, riff maker. <laughs> the, the, the album is all about riffs. The riffs are, 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 are crazy, awesome. man. Is it, this guy is probably the, because he's left-handed, so that's what that, that's the Tommy Tommy oh, uh, okay. Iomi yeah, like kind of groove. I don't know what it is, but man, it's. Yeah, us left-handers, our brain works in a different, a different kind way. of way. <laughs> Could be. Huh? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. We, uh, maybe I'll leave my brain to science when I die, and uh, they can figure it out. So when he brings uh, such a riff, such a good music to the table, myself, I have to find some vocals, some some melodies that that, that are gonna interact with his riffs, not work against them or or, or, or you know com right, right. compete against Competing them. It's, it's gotta be. Both interwoven, both of kind yeah, of yeah. Uh, complementary. Yeah. It, it's always been the case, I think. Off, I'm absolutely. On Sweet Dreams and on this album. Yes. But I was just talking to Rick and Dan before you joined us. I mean, I went back and listened to Metal Eyes again. I've been listening since it came out, but it just sounds. I like the sound. I thought the sound does really. You know, the bass stands out. The guitar stands out. Everything was very well produced on that album. And I mean, yourself as a guitar player, what, what were some of your influences, or, or might still be your influence? Well, when I first started, it was uh, I was 13, and uh, I guess Kiss hit me hard. <laughs> like you everybody, know, being a 13 year old uh, <laughs> comic book reading young man. <laughs> yeah, Kiss really blew me away. And, and then, then uh, start emulating that, and then I pro you progress, right? I went from Kiss to Rush. Oof, that was a big <laughs> That one. was a jump. Yes. <laughs> And then you create, you get your own sound eventually, right? So, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, but and there's a lot of people I love, uh, uh, Jimmy Page, the Beatles. Uh, but uh, when we're talking about uh, more metal kind of things, I think uh, uh, my my favorite guitar player is Randy Rhodes. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Randy Rhodes right was time, big for me. Yeah. Dan, Dan, and Dan, and, oh. and uh, uh, when I was. Uh, Figuring out solos for this album, uh, I was thinking a little bit. Randy, what would Randy oh, really? do? Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, you know, but it, it comes cool. out. It comes out my me, but yeah, yeah. there was a little uh, some influence there for sure. I mean, for, sure. for a guy that did basically two albums, the, the the effect he's had on guitarists ever since. Twenty five years old. <laughs> yeah, he burned like he burned like yeah, a yeah, like a I moth to the flame. Yeah. But um, we used to jam on, on Blizzard of Oz and, uh, and, oh, and Diary of, of, of a Madman man, man, man. because sure. we started as a cover band doing their own stuff, you know, right, because right. back then that's what they wanted, the, the, the bar the owners marks, yeah, and they had the so, so we, the old repertoire, remember that? Yeah. yeah. Suicide yeah, Solution, yeah. Diary of a Man Man. So yes. he, got, he got the licks, he, he you know, yeah. so he was 25 no, at so that time. Nice. So this is a good school. The school of bars, you know, and doing the, 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 the uh, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. That road is a good road. It's a tough road, yeah. but that's, 
compared to uh, it, it, it gives the gar the the, the garnet in the in the voice yeah, 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 <laughs> the garnet yeah, yeah, yeah. gives you the that garnet uh, the whiskey gives you the whiskey gives you the whiskey, Wh whiskey and you, smoke filled you, the rooms and uh, yeah. believe they were smoke back yeah, then yeah, in the yeah. room. holy I have a friend who's a guitarist and he his voice has never been the same because he played in so many times in those bars back then with all the smoke filled rooms and but for us on stage it was the smoke machines and all oh, that yeah. stuff so oh, it was bro. See, it was, it was it was tough. It was a tough way. We were young, and we, you know, we didn't you mind at that time. Yeah, young and restless. You know? But yeah, we but were learning how to be a working band. Yeah, Sta you know. standing. Uh, what's the lyric? Standing proud. Standing right? proud. <laughs> no, but it goes, it goes back to your in point. Twenties. Yeah, the uh, the voice or the American idols of the world. They're not putting in their dues, right? I mean, coming up through the bars like you guys did. That gives you cred, that gives you experience on how to handle stuff on a bigger oh, yeah. stage. I mean. Oh yeah, well that's the way you have to do it. Things have There's changed. There's no, there you, no that shortcuts. Scene, that scene doesn't exist anymore, you know, all those bars. And back in, back in those days we were touring, we were doing Chabrock, Quebec, and then we were touring and then we were just making a run. circuit. And we were rolling, 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 and there were plenty of places to play, but yeah. it does, it's not like that anymore. No, no, no. And getting the publicity, promoting that you're in town, that's, that's why we do this show, right? To let people know what's coming out. And, and try to get, drive as much interest as possible because sometimes you don't even know a band's been there since they've left. Right. This is Dan's Rum, Maroc Space. This is Alan's uh, neighbor before we heard. We, we understand this is Alan's neighbor over here on the wall. Mike Larak plays bass. Yeah. And right there, this is good friend. What's her name? Uh, I don't know. Greta. Greta. <laughs> <laughs> like the band. Okay. Greta Van Fleet. Hey, hey mama, huh? send away your move. Got a mega Okay, slap. so wait a second. Hold on. Here yeah. we go. Here's This is a cool little poster here. This was back in the Verdun Auditorium, right? It was. Yeah. But yeah. That, that's before Cliff died. Because oh, okay. look at the date. And he's on the poster. So quickly tell me the story about uh, the Metallica. Like you're on stage, you're doing sound check, and uh, what happened? Yeah, we were looking forward to meeting the guys, you know, so the first show, we, we, we were, I think, in Montreal. Mm -hmm. was, were we in Montreal, guys, for the first show with uh, Metallica? Where were we? Anyways, we were doing a sound check, and as we were sound checking, I turn around and I see Lars and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and James on James. one side. Yeah. And, and, and on the other side, the rest of the band, the rest of Metallica. So I go, wow. So I, I, I tell the guy, stop, stop. So we could salute them, you know. And as, as we tried to do that, they go, no, 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 finish the song, finish. Because they knew our material. Do you remember what song it was? I think it was The End of the Night. Remember, we talked about that the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, The End of the Night. So we, we picked back right where we stopped. We said, OK, let's go. Have they called you ever since? Have you met them? Have they, any, anything like that? No? No, we did that leg of the tour with or them. you're not taking their calls. If they're calling, <laughs> you're not taking their calls. No, not at all, man. We'd love to have a call to, to, to receive a, an offer to go do some some more gigs with oh, Metallica. Yeah, that'd be yeah, the, yeah. It'd be a perfect, make, a perfect blend. Because Cause, cause now they're going with Raven. Yeah. They're playing with Raven in Florida. And they're kind of going back to sort of the roots of it all, right? The so, 80s sound. Yeah. So. so who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um, and then Megadeth, there's a connection with Megadeth too, right? Yeah, yeah, well. You know, Dave Mustaine, I know he, he liked the album. I know Dave Elson, we've talked about that. He loved the album We too. got lucky, man. And, and the way it happened, uh, 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 the, the story was told, is that the Kerrang! magazine editor was doing an interview with Lars Ulrich, and he had his Walkman. At that time, people had Walkman with the cassette. Yes, yes, yes. So just before he left the interview, he. Lars asked him, what, what are you listening? You know, I'm curious to know what's in your Walkman. And he goes, oh, it's a new band from Montreal. And he gave him the tape. And we finished touring with them. See, you, you never, never know. Talk. Whatever's in your Walkman could lead you to success, right? Exactly. Ba -dum -bum. OK, here we go. <laughs> uh, what about the drummers? Influences for you, Gro? Well, the, the first, first one for me and Rick, the first albums we, we used to listen is Led Zeppelin. So, for, of course, John Bonham for a lot of drummer is, is an influence. But in the, in the metal, you know, Lars is a great, I think he's a great drummer. Lars Ulrich is a great drummer. Oh, and, yeah. You know, lots of people are, are I don't know why, but I think I think Lars is great, and you know, uh, in the metal, Nico Nico McBrain is a yeah. great drummer. Uh, you know, there's plenty of them, and, and you know, there's plenty of good drummers. You know, 
Yeah, it's yeah. a tough genre for drummers, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's I mean, not an yeah. easy kind of music to play for drummers. So Vinny that's Apathy, why Lars is Carmen so good. Yeah. are great yeah. drummers, you know, all those guys. Tommy Aldridge is still doing it Tommy in the Aldridge. 70s. Yeah, Tommy yeah. Aldridge is one of the greatest, you know. And vocalists, I mean, you could probably list 15 vocalists that influence your, your style in it over the years. From Elvis to, uh, to I don't know, man, uh, it, pick it. It's yeah. very large. I, I, I love music. I love all types of music. I love Johnny Cash. I love, uh, I love uh, Dio. Mm -hmm. I love uh, all types of singers. Are, I listen to, to a new song, and if the singer comes and grabs my attention, sometimes it, it, it gets me going, man. It gets me going. So how, 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 do you get, how do you guys get signed to Aquarius, and why Aquarius out of all the record labels back then? I mean, you know, they were local, yes. We were lucky. I, I think we were lucky that we were doing a demo at this place, and some guy came to do pictures, and he knew a guy from Aquarius. He said, well, I'm going to bring this guy, and uh, it didn't take long we, we signed with them. Wow. That, that, uh, just the word so about it was, working? Yeah, and just, you know. And what, did, what are your thoughts? I know Miles Goodwin, I mean, they were the stable of Aquarius back in the 80s, April Wine. He said they, they just couldn't push the U.S. market. They didn't have the in in the U.S. market. Is that something you guys encountered on, on both records? Of course. Yeah. Of course, because if you're back then, if you were in a metal band, if you were from Montreal, you had two strikes against you because uh, all the bands from California or, 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 or the U.K., you know, they were getting the attention. So, so it was... For sure that it was tougher if you were from Quebec, but then again, look at Voivod. They did really, really good. So, I don't think it mu it's much of a C Quebec thing that it is a Canadian thing. That's well said, yeah. There you How you many know, bands can we name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Saints and Sinners. Canadian, yeah. Right, you know. Yeah, if yeah. it's Canadian, sometimes it's, it's harder, but... Then again, There's we have so some very good Canadian bands. Guess yes. who Rush yeah. might mention yeah. that. Def Dealer back in the day with you Def guys. Dealer, There's another yeah. one that's uh, kind of a hidden gem that's out there. So uh, let's get into some of the song. You got the video for Dirty Pig came out. And uh, what's the response? Is that based on anybody or? Uh? <laughs> based on anybody in particular? No. <laughs> Not at all. No, no. It could be about anybody who was in a certain position of power and abuses it. It could be somebody that's bullying you somebody, some corporate thief, it could be a banker or your print, high school principal, <laughs> anybody like that can be a dirty pig to you, you know? <laughs> and, and I'm you know really, what I mean? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, There's a, all, we all went into but a few people Well, like that, we right? weren't really thinking of anybody in particular. Okay. No, and I mean, the lyrics are great on the new album. Uh, I mean, any way, any time you can w work the w word feces into a song is a plus, I think. So. <laughs> yes. But uh, how, how is it easy for you to write the write lyrics? Uh, well, for, the, for for that exactly that word and, and that 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 phrase, which is brilliant, it is. It's our good friend Rich Uzanio, okay, who's, yeah. got, who's credited on the album yeah. for writing the lyrics. Yeah, so basically, we worked as a team where Mike was the main songwriter, and when it was time to record the drum. He was there at, with, with the bass player to make sure that they weren't compete, that they were interlocked with the guitars. And when it came to the vocals, he came to me and says, Rick, you got some great melodies on what we had before, so let's work on that and let's go get somebody that's totally bilingual and has got good penmanship and it's a good friend, Richard. I knew you yeah. want to pick up from there, Mike? Yeah. Well, he wrote most of the words, most of the lyrics. Uh, uh, it was based on. Uh, the way he worked was I, I made him listen to the original demos, so we'd have uh, Rick's uh, melody. Okay, a medical melody. So melody. yeah, and uh, we, I, I, I had uh, written down uh, some of the old lyrics as well. And they weren't so even, it was just, uh, how do you call it, working, working? Yeah, they were uh, working, working, working hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was some young, uh, yeah. scatting uh, or uh, anything exactly, just to fill yeah. in the space. Yeah. Some, some was that, some was real lyrics, but they weren't not that good. As what we have right yeah. now. Go ahead. Mike. So 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 I remember having a, a quite a few meetings with him. You know, there was there were some titles that we liked, uh, but even in some cases there was a word in the title that we liked. I said, could you keep that? Try and keep that in. <laughs> but he did a great job. Oh, uh, I think the uh, I think the lyrics are 
really cool. Well, I, I'm really, gonna, really, really. Cool. I'm gonna get right to unleashing hell because yeah. that song. I mean, there's always you know, denim and leather, hungry days of Deep Purple uh, by Deep Purple. But this song is right up there with the unleashing hell. Brings you right back to '86, Montreal, the whole scene. Uh, yeah. I mean, hats off to you guys. That that song's my my favorite on the album, and really, just I relive my youth through that song. Well, so you really took me back to. You have really to know listen. something. Thank you very much. Yeah, you have to know something about that. Then, is that the guy that that I like? I said I wrote all the melodies. The guy that wrote the lyrics was hanging around the band back in '86. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an old a friend. Good, good, well, good friend. He's always been around us at, at that time in '86. Yeah, he, Rich was he knows yeah, yeah. big time, man. Yeah, because yeah, he so he knew what he was doing when he was writing because he was there. He, right? he was right. already, he knows, already he knows, were a friend of ours. Oh, that's great. I mean, there's so many. There's, uh, took my chances. You know, we go from the party atmosphere of Unleashing Hell to, to a little bit of isolation and, and depression, loneliness in that song. So you guys really covered a wide spectrum on the album. Yes, yes. Is that, uh, that's what's so cool about metal is that, it, that yeah, the subject don't have to be about the personal struggles and love and hate and relationship. It can be about anything, anything. So took my chances. You know, it, it's it, on dit en français, prends rien au pied de la lettre. Some people will, will, will read the lines, and when I sing it, you know, they will understand it their way. Right, right. That's what's so cool about me. You can interpret it all in, yes. in, based on your own experience. Definitely. And, and have your own interpretation. Yeah. <gasps> here we go. Okay, so this we've established as a drum kit, right? Exactly. And here's all the Marshall stacks. This is where Mike Plant does his magic. So this is very highly confidential because he cannot even film the knobs. Because as you can see, it's knob. Yeah, you don't want to know the tones. You don't want to know the secret this tones. This is a recipe. This is Swords recipe right here. Don't don't show it. Please. Uh, okay. <laughs> here's Metal Eyes. Here's the poster. Yeah. Look at look at the guys. Young 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 look at young that. bucks. You know this this is like <laughs> this is like a statement. If you stop drinking, you'll you'll you'll, you'll, you'll save money. <laughs> um, you know another band that stood out, and I asked them the same question at the time. Coney Hatch was a similar band coming out of Toronto. Yeah. They made a fourth album, uh, maybe five, six years ago. Time flies. You know, and, and we asked them like, how how did how did it turn out? We, you know, uh, how did it success? There was a little bit of non-starter with them because there was no touring involved. There was no promo really. It was just for the fans' sake and for them to get together again and playing. So it sounds a bit familiar. But what what are your plans for the future? Ooh, plans for the future. Hmm. Well, we're gonna put out this album first. That's a good start. <laughs> first <yeah>. and foremost, <laughs> have a, um, a little tour of Quebec uh, in January, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe uh, do some other videos as well. Mm -hmm. Thinking about that. And uh, which hat? You, what, which hat do you have on now? Uh, your, your video hat? Your director? Uh, Pardon me. Right now? Yeah. No, no, I'm uh, just the <laughs> guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> a cold ice pack after last night, maybe. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> but uh, we're gonna wait uh, for offers, you know. And uh, it would be nice to have a little tour of maybe uh, some gigs in Europe. Yeah, that would be nice. Maybe states as well. Let's take the opportunity to 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 have a little a, a little section in French, okay? Oh, we on, on va en profiter pour inviter mm -hmm. euh, les gens qui écoutent l'entrevue, qui soient que vous soyez de Québec, Trois Rivières. Allemand, Allemand, oui. Allemand, Québec, Trois-Rivières, Montréal. Euh, les fans, euh, ça s'en vient, hein? on va être sold out, pas mal sûr. Fait que si vous n'avez pas vos billets, dépêchez-vous, parce que ça s'en vient vite le mois de janvier. Ça ferait un beau cadeau de Noël en plus. Oh, oui, les, oui. Les, les femmes, là, si vos hommes tripent <rire> sur le métal, logo, achetez-le des billets pour, euh, pour le temps des fêtes. Et puis c'est ça, on peut le dire aussi en anglais. Hein? So you were talking I think, about I fun. think, yes, uh, Rick was just saying. Great Christmas gifts with a metal head in your life. Get these tickets, and they'll probably be sold out. I mean, 14th yeah. of January, yeah. Corona. 15th of January, L'Imperial de Québec. 21st. 20th, 20th in Alma. Yeah, and yeah. 21st. In Trois Rivières. Right. Who's getting quite popular. A lot of bands are playing there more and more. So Nice venue. Yeah, okay. And, and I mean, again, the four original members. How often does that happen? Especially. Right. 30 some odd years later. Everybody's right? alive. Just yeah, that's, knock on, that's knock the most wood. important thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so, what happened when in the same band you have two U's and two Mike. Yeah. <laughs>
You got the pair. Yeah, that's uh, it. So you don't break yeah. that. And you know the thing is, is Mike, Mike, the, the bass player, and Mike are really old friends. They know themselves before they knew us. Oh, so okay. They're really close. And then Mike and Mike, the double mics. So, so you, you you always kept in touch, is what I'm hearing. Pretty and, much. And yeah. Now it's uh, it was just a good time, like you said, to release. Well, of course. Revisit, yeah. Revisit and release uh, yeah. the, the third album. So, yeah. I mean, everybody was in uh, was okay to, to be on this project, and uh, kids were growing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now that the kids are gone, Left we don't house, have anything we have to do. Plenty of time, <laughs> and, and 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 they want to see dad playing in the band. They're going to be at the shows. I would. Oh have yeah, course, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, oh yeah, they yeah. Like of course it. they. Yeah. Have they, you they, there? We did, we did a couple, have uh, we did a show. Um, at Heavy Montreal, uh, yeah. your daughter was on the side of the stage with yes, my daughter. Yes, <laughs> and their sword T-shirt, and everybody yeah. was happy. The kid, the kids, our kids, uh, they, they kids just are uh, all right. they <laughs> are, they're are awed all right. by looking at the uh, the elder metal that's yeah. going on there. <laughs> elder metal, <laughs> elder. Metal. You gotta get a T-shirt written. That's elder cool. metal, yeah. Oh, oh, that's the sword. That's the I, sword. I'm like a clown right now. Yeah, that's I'm the point. That's clown. the point. I'm always a clown, and that's now I'm making it. you act like a clown too. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we t Motorhead. Yeah. Motorhead. Do you have any Motorhead stuff around here? Um, no. Any poster? Motorhead poster? No. 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 All right. So Motorhead. I mean, you know, quickly. Uh, you toured with Motorhead in the UK. What tour was it? What album was it? Did they have? It was the uh, in '89. The uh, no '87. Sorry. '89. '87. Man, I mixed up. It's okay. Uh -huh. And it was uh, for the rock and roll album, Motorhead's Rock and Roll. Uh, and uh, the thing is, is that we, we toured the UK. It was like 27 shows in 35 days. So not only did we tour with Motorhead, but we, we kind of hang around with, with, with Lemmy. He took us under his wing big time. So if we'd get, let's say, to... Um, Edinburgh, Edinburgh mm -hmm. in Scotland. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Thank you. Edinburgh. <laughs> I was going, where would, is that? Where is that? Yeah, he <laughs> would take us out to the local bars and, and show us, you know, that his route. He mm. would show us his route. So it was cool. Fond, fond memories of Lemmy. This guy was the real deal. He was rock and roll. He huh? was exactly the same all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's let's continue. Okay, here's the pedals. We don't want to know the configurations of those, <laughs> right? Or we might get in trouble. And yep, yep. yeah. So that, that's and, about and it. Here, man. Here, we like we like and, tight, and, tight knit spaces, you know. And, and I did, I didn't know we were getting catered today here. Yeah. The metal voice, as we took over, we got catering. The manager, Rich, right Rich, come here, Rich. The manager, there. Quick little. Uh, Maybe en français or quelques mots en français? Bienvenue au House of Rock, les amis. Here we are over three decades later, and I think the demand for this album is going to be equally as strong as when you guys launched in the 80s. Uh, it's a great album. We show it again because the cover is just so nice. I mean, I, everybody I've been listening to it, highly recommend this album. And I just want to thank the guys from Sword here. Unfortunately, Mike wasn't be able to, to be with us today, but uh, he's here in spirit. And uh, we love you, Mike. We, we out. Maybe so, next time. <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe we'll do it in one of the shows. So. Yeah. So thank you for joining the Metal Boys today. Excited. Sword, after all these years, back together with the third album. Mike, Rick, Dan. Thank you. And thanks to thanks you guys. To thanks, for us, uh, thanks, yeah. thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for having us in their oh. bat, bat cave. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the House of Rock. The House, House of, rock. of Rock. Don't tell anybody where it is. Don't know. <laughs> Oui, alors très important, on le, le 14 janvier euh, au, au Corona, à Montréal, le 14 janvier, le 15 janvier à l'Impérial de Québec. Ensuite de ça, y a-t-il quelqu'un qui va venir m'aider? Danny Boy, Danny come here. Danny, Danny Boy, c'est le frère de ah. Rick. Um, c'est quoi les dates, Charles? Hein? <rire> le 20 à, à la boîte au bleuet de Alma. Le 20 à Alma et le 21 à Trois-Rivières. C'est ça. Je ne voulais pas me tromper sur les, 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 le 20 à Alma. 21 à Trois-Rivières. Sword. Yeah, yeah. On s'en vient chez vous. Ça va rocker solide. Je vous montrerai bien le songless, mais je l'ai laissé dans mon champ. All right, and the last note. Here we go. I know Alan showed this before, but there we go. There's the album. Look at that album. Look at that. Did you say on the last week? Did you say on the last note? On the last note. Okay. okay. Wait. On the last note. Okay, here we go. You come, Sibiano. Here we, we come. We got it. We, we go cut. Dun, 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 dun. That's it.